Hey guys, here I'm going to show you how to do a complicated forearm, and on top of that, uh, I'll show you how to do uh, one a little bit more simple than one I'm going to lay out here for you. And we're also, I'm also going to uh, show you how to set up a hand, and a good hand. There's a couple hands you can do. There's one geared towards games, it's very simple, very straightforward. And there's one's geared a little bit more towards animation, which allows you to go in there and have a little bit better deformations and so forth. Now if we look at a little punk rock guy here real quick, we're going to talk a little bit about topology here. I've since changed this guy dramatically, but we can actually look a little bit at this guy here and how he's laid out. I made him pretty simple. He's very uh, stylized. He's following my art style. I'm a cartoonist by trade when I started out. And we have these shoulders to go to the chest. He has no shirt on, so hence I did the nipples if I wanted to isolate an area for texture and for uh, displacement as well as normals. But um, you'll notice my grid flow is pretty simple, straightforward. Let me turn the bones off x-ray for a little bit. You can see it's uh, isolating the muscle a little bit. And you can keep it pretty simple. You don't have to. You'll see some tutor tutorials and some artists will actually isolate um, the bicep and have edge flow going around it. You don't necessarily always have to do that. And I'll show you. I'll prove my point to you in just a second. He's got tiny little elbows that have changed actually since. You can see that he's a jogger. He works out on a regular basis. Quite manly of a butt. I'm just kidding around. All right. So you'll see my edge flow works really well. This can be deformed and uh, moved around quite easily. And he smooths really nicely. So some of the irregular sharp points you'll see smooth really nice when I run a final smooth on him. And these triangles become quads and so forth. But you notice I also isolated the rib cage. Now you don't always have to do that. I just, I'm just kind of an old school character artist where I end up, when I build stuff, I kind of isolate regions and so forth. But let me show you why you don't always have to do that. Let me go to Facebook really quick. <clears throat> let me go to um, Masters Modeling, the Academy. There's a site called Hippodrome. I uh, give this guy some props here. Horrible website, but an amazing, as in like uh, the way it's formed. It, it, to be able to navigate is horrible, but the information is priceless. Don't expect us 3D artists always to make good websites. That's why we have friends. Um, but you'll see some really good deformation examples here. And you'll see that it's pretty simple. This is from one of the lead character artists at Pixar. I don't know if he's still there, but he has actually some really good examples of how to isolate regions. And you can see some of his stuff is pretty simple, but you'll also notice that every joint there are every area access point, every limb bending area, there's going to at least be four to three to even five edge loops. And this is one of the best ways to tackle that and to get some nice uh, movement. And you'll see he also has the, the chest that goes into the shoulders. That actually has some really good isolation there. Let's go back here. And he has examples of how these things move, which are really cool. There's the arm there. If we go back a couple more clicks, you'll see we have architecture. Articulation theory can talk to it. Articulaka talk. You'll see him bend really nicely. Look at that. Way awesome. Articulating the body. You can see some of the samples here. Let's see if that clicked. There you go. Third time's a charm. And you can see, even though he has simple geometry in some areas, it works really well because he has enough edges around where the joints are going to lay down. You'll even see in his wrist, he doesn't quite have as much wrist twist as mine does but it seems to work pretty well looks like i clicked on the same one there seems to still work pretty well look at that cool nice nice nice, nice. i always do the flat knee when i build my legs if you guys watch that video um, it actually is a good example of how to approach your legs and setting up the bone for that and let me see here so there's a lot more i'm not going to get into it too much but again that's hippiedrome.com it's actually really good for those that want to get into movies and so forth games sometimes are literally you have to be a little bit more strategic although the playstation 4 may be breaking that mold but uh because we have limited polys to work with so we try to make our deformations work we'll even put triangles sometimes in areas where clothing will bend so we get that little believability that will help the normal map so let's go back into maya <clears throat> We have our punk rock guy. We can go ahead and put him back into template mode for a second. And we have our <clears throat> spine. And we talked about building the spine out. From the spine, you want to go from here to make the clavicle. And from the clavicle, we want to go to the shoulder. So we can do this from scratch. You can actually kind of see how this works. All right. And don't need the pull vector just yet. But I'm going to leave that controller because we might use it later. And before we do that, we'll freeze the transforms on him. Hi, buddy. All right, cool. So um, I'm even going to leave out 
the clavicle in this particular case. So we're going to get to the joint tool. So we can either switch the animation or just go spacebar and we can go to skeleton and we're going to have to use the joint tool. There we go. Pull that guy up. Click on the spine where we left off and ignore if these guys aren't perfectly matching right now because what we're going to do is a mirror joints eventually. In this particular exercise, we may not, but uh, you get the idea. So right here, we want to create our clavicle. And the clavicle, if you want, you can make it pretty close to where the bone is. I actually have a working clavicle section modeled on my model. You can kind of see it in the wireframe here. You'll see the clavicle kind of isolated a bit right in there. So what I'm going to do here is just build it here, place it right there. Then go into the shoulder area where I know the shoulder is going to bend. Not in the middle of the shoulder. you got to be careful of that. You want to put it on the end of the shoulder. Um, and from there, we want to go straight across. Okay, so you got to be careful. If you want to snap the grid, you can. But we'll just go and go straight across here. You can adjust it later. Maya always does that elephant titus. That's always helpful. It's not really being completely sarcastic. All right, so uh, and then we make the wrist. And I'm going to leave it right there. Now, there's multiple ways to approach the ba the forearm. I'll do a basic video on uh, a basic forearm system that you can create. But this one, I'm going to create a little bit more of the complicated forearm. One, we do need to move the shoulder forward a little bit so it lines up with the arm. And we do want to make sure, actually, let me move it back just a tiny bit here. We do want to make sure your arm always has a bend in it, just like with the legs. Because if you don't, you're not going to get your IK to favor one side over the other and you really want that to be able to have some good articulation so with these uh, arms set up we're actually going to go to the top down <coughs> I'm going to create two more joints let me actually lower my joint size because it's pretty ridiculous so let's go in here and go to a joint size scale that down a bit and place it in one joint here and enter and then I'll put another joint here so I'm probably going to have to check on this to make sure in 3d that these guys are in the right spot hopefully I didn't hit that bug with my uh, ah or it doesn't always want to select that's always a pain in the butt there we go and the move tool does not exist it's completely gone awesome so hopefully this doesn't happen become a problem hello Maya don't be a jerk all right let's try w again there he goes and there is in 2012 and 2013 a little bit of a selection weirdness issue i don't know why so all right i'm at the f key here we go so we got these two bones set in here and there's two ways that we can set this up one of them we can put these isolated bones here and connect it to the elbow or another one we can actually make it like a trident which you'll see over here and um, we'll put the x-ray joint so you can see it. And what that trident does, I just made bones going directly out of the elbow. It makes it so that if I make an IK, let's go and put my IK, or set up my IK here. I'll just go old school here. Let's go to IK handle tool. Make sure it says RP. So we can get a pull vector, otherwise it's not gonna work. We're gonna click on the shoulder, and then we're gonna click on the wrist right there. Oh, Control-Z, little selection issue. Try that again, shoulder. And we'll move in for the kill. And there we go for the wrist. And once you make that, once you make the bones coming out of the elbow and the other side here, we're, again, we're doing the radius and ulna, we're going to parent them, these guys, IKs. Actually, we're going to build IKs. And we're going to parent those IKs underneath this bone. Almost forgot my own step there. Sorry about that. Let's go back to IKs. So what we did was we built two bones coming out of the elbow to each end. We're going to go now make an IK for the SC. We've got an SC solver ready to go. Click on one bone and then click on the end there. Hit the G key to activate the tool again. Click on one bone and click on the end there. There we go. So once you got that, what you can do is grab these IKs and parent them underneath this bone. So we notice we have two wrist areas here. This guy's the wrist twist. This guy's the wrist bend. And if you look when people move their hand, when you're waving at somebody, you don't really rotate your radius and ulna. It's kind of up and down, waving. 
either telling them to get lost or you're happy to see them, whatever works for you. But if you're even shooing a cat, you're going to move your wrists. They're going to go up and down. But if you're going to um, maybe put on a tire, your forearm, your radius and ulna, these bones right here are going to rotate. So what we're going to do is grab <clears throat> each one of these IKs and then we're going to parent them underneath this bone. Hit P. So what happens now is when I grab this bone and I rotate, you'll see it rotate around the arm. So you get a little radius and ulna movement there. Pretty cool. Pretty awesome. But some people complain in my classes. They're like, I don't, I have to paint these guys and I got to get rid of the weights and it's really dumb. Well, I built a model. I'm not going to pull them up right now, but I built a model when I made these guys free floating. It actually works really nice. And all I did was paint the influence down the forearm, go all the way down the pipe. So to do so, what we're going to do is parent constraint them to that bone. But before we get too excited, I want you to realize what we've done here. We got the shoulder, we got the elbow. We also need it. We got the wrist twist. That's this guy. But we need to make one more to make the wrist bend. So let's go ahead and actually rotate the shoulder a little bit more. I grabbed an IK and accident. We're going to rotate the shoulder just a little bit more and be careful not to bring your bones outside of your body. It's just a good habit not to do that. And you'll have to see a doctor. <laughs> That's a medical joke. It always gets me. All right, so we're going to move this here. And we got this set up. And again, you can check if it's straight by just going in here to these views. Check your uh, pivot points. Make sure they're on point. It's slightly bent right there. And that's going to probably give me a little bit of trouble. So what I can do is maybe just rotate it just a tiny bit. Control C. Let me see here. Um, I can mess with his orientation. So if I have to, I can maybe tweak his orientation here. Actually, you know what? I think I shouldn't have too much trouble with that. But if it does give me trouble, I can go back and do a little surgery. Do you want to try to keep it straight if you can? All right. I think we'll be all right. We don't have time for orientation all that right now. All right. But you do always want to check it. I'll notice the uh, X is going all the way down the pipe. And I have the uh, Z pointing out to the side. This should work okay. All right. So now we're going to do parent constraint, which is opposite of parenting. You want is do parent constraint. And what we need to do is actually get these guys to talk to this bone. So you don't want to go child and parent. You want to go parent, then child, and then from here, you do parent constraint. You'll click on it, you'll see they're talking to each other, and then we'll do parent, then child, and hit the G key. It's easy to get that confused. Um, I get that confused all the time. So you can actually see it rotating. And then from there, you can paint the weights all the way down the forearm when you get to that point. Let's put the IK system in. Double click on the IK, make sure that it's RP because we need a pull vector. Click here and click there. Boom, there he goes. Perfect. Oh, looks like Maya flipped it on us. He's all, no, screw you. Now, when that happens, when Maya pushes up a bone, there's an easy fix to that. That's because I do apparently do have a little bit of a bend in there. You can freeze the transforms on the parent. And believe it or not, that's not going to give us too much trouble because it's at the very beginning. Of this guy and if you and you should always after you do this check your orientation so freeze transforms on the bone adjust it ever so slightly didn't mess up the elbow didn't mess up the wrist didn't mess up our constraints we're okay so far go and double click on the IK click on the shoulder click on the wrist there we go and now we can notice it did not move yay quick fix for that we can move this around <clears throat> and if we need to, we can rotate our wrist bone accordingly, move it around, get radius and ulna. Now, as soon as you start using, though, your IKFK built-in switch, and I have a video on that in my YouTube channel, you will notice that things start to get a little bit rough to be able to rotate that. What you can do, what can work if you run into that problem, you're like, man, I don't have to turn off my IK to just rotate my wrist. I mean, what if he's pushing and rotating? You can cheat a little bit. I'm going to turn the IK off for a second. And we can make, I'm going to duplicate these guys for a second. Control D, W. I'm going to move them up, get rid of the old ones. I'm totally cheating and being lazy. Move them back down. 
you can make a dummy bone. And that dummy bone, you just got to remember to select it when you go to paint your weights, can be the one that rotates this guy. And it's not dependent on the IK. You're like, what does that mean, Sean? Well, so you don't get confused, let's actually make one more bone for the wrist. So everything's in context. That's a wrist twist. This one is the wrist bend. Probably could be back a little bit, control C. We'll just move this back a little bit. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and translate that guy just a tiny bit there. Move these guys down too. We can move that down a little more. I'll leave that for now. We'll just do this generically. And we'll just say he bends his wrist a little bit higher than normal because of that injury in the mosh pit. So there we go. So many jokes, so little time. All right, so we got this here. We got our bone in there. We're going to make a ghosted bone. We're going to make a bone which is going to fit. Control C. We're going to fit it right here. I'm going to enter. I'm going to keep my finger the V key. I'm going to bring him up to speed. There you go. Let me see if I can. Oh, don't want to scale. I'm going to offset him just a little bit. And we can even overwrite him, like do a little override on him if we want to. Let me give him a different color. Um, we'll worry about that later, though. Let me get rid of this guy. We can also put him in a layer, too, and just generically color him. So now that we got this guy in here, we're actually going to change his name. We'll call this Rotate Joint. This rotate joint is not going to be dependent whether the IK is on or off. We'll be able to rotate and still be able to use the IK. So since he's the parent, we're going to actually get these kids to talk to him real quick. And let's do that. So we're going to not, we're going to go to parent first, then child. And we're going to do a constraint. And that would be a parent constraint. Grab him. And then we do the same thing again over here. And the G key, repeat the last process. There we go. So the, we're also now going to parent constraint this guy to that major bone. So I'm going to grab this first, and then we're going to grab this guy, and then we're going to do parent constraint. So we're going to grab the parent first, then child. That's opposite of regular parenting. Parent constraint. So now. Now we got to be careful because we got to do our IK. We got to make sure it's in the bone chain. So if you want to, you can actually put that guy on a separate layer if it helps you. We'll call this wrist twist. And you always want to delete your layers. Oh, I did two layers in accident. When you go to export your rig because you don't want tons of layers in when you have a bunch of rigs talking to each other, it's all embarrassing. They're all confused and some people have the same layers and you have to go home and change. It's weird. All right, so we're going to go and name this guy um, wrist twist. And we can't have a space here, so we'll do underscore and save. And uh, I'm going to hide him, so let's add a selected object. Actually, I'll just template him out so we don't get Maya keep yelling at us saying, You can't connect that. There's no IK. Nothing connected in a chain. Maya will yell at you. Let's go to IK handle tool. Again, double check. Must be RP. Click on the shoulder and click on the wrist. And we should be good to go. And now check this out when we go to this wrist bone and we go to rotate it's all within the chain system and you'll see it there we go and we doesn't matter if our ik is on or off because that bone's still present and you won't run into that trouble all right so that's about it with this one uh the next one i'm going to talk about is hands but i want to give you a quick rundown on how to tackle the radius and ulna system you can do this way the trident way or free floating bones and i have one free floating bones right now and it's working amazing